okay now. You'll have to let me know if they came out right. Mmm, that is good. It's refreshing, isn't it? Well, it'd be even better with some rum in it. Mark <laughs> 390, this is approach heading 160, Victor ILS. Runway 28 right, final approach course. We're coming back uh, to 10 knots and uh, 160 heading down to 10,000. What runway did he say? Is there grapefruit in this? Cranberry, orange, and a touch of Sprite. 2 8 right. Spark 390, descend and maintain 6,000. Clear to 6, Spark 390. Okay, guys, back to work. Thanks, Jeanette. Folks, from the flight deck, uh, we should be on the ground in less than 10 minutes. Temperature is 52 degrees, winds out of the west around 10 miles per hour. And for Captain Steve Garcia and the rest of the flight crew, we'd like to thank you for flying Spartan Air. Flight attendants, please prepare the cabin for arrival. Reminded me of old Boo Radley there for a minute. Boo? Oh, yeah? What's he up to? I'm supposed to fly this route. Something about his kid's little league or something. Bastard. <laughs> Spark 390, turn left heading 100. Uh, we're having some trouble turning left. Spark 390, understand you can only make right turns. That's affirmative. Roger. Your present track puts you about nine miles north of the airport, and uh, the only way we can get you around runway 28 is a slight left turn with differential power, or you can go and jockey it over. Roger. Okay, we're in a right turn now. That's about the only way we can go. Be able to make very slight turns on the final, but right now. Parker, right turn, heading 255. Now the elevator doesn't want to work. Uh, I'm calling systems. Uh, this is Spartan 390. We are only able to control um, a, a level flight with uh, asymmetrical power settings. We have very little rudder or elevator. Steve, see, see if you want me to salute the elevator. Whatever you can do. Spartan 390, fly heading 240 and say your souls on board. Now the nose is coming up. Give me the gear. I might hold the nose down a bit. Souls on board, Spark 390. Getting that right now. I wonder about the outboard analyzer. If we put some flaps out, do you think that would give us outboard? I'm gonna have to do something. Here. Where the hell's a runway? Up to the right. Jimmy, Jimmy, up to the right. Spark 390. Airport Damn! We're gonna invert! Hang on! Pull it up! Pull it up! Goodbye, Next of kin? Excuse me? We need a name of next of kin. It's policy. Yeah, is it also policy that you lost my reservation to? Gruesome stuff, isn't it? Uh, what? What do you mean? I'm sorry, I, I don't know what you're, uh, you're talking about. Asking people for next of kin when they're about to board an airplane? It doesn't exactly inspire a great deal of confidence. Right, right. I hate to use the B-I-T-C-H word, but whatever happened to the friendly flyers? Well, they stopped being friendly when the plane became a flying bus. Hey, guys, I did the best I could with the money we had, all right? No, Miles, it's all right. It's all right. It's not you. It's the airlines. Well, back in the good old days, flying was special. People dressed up. You board one of those beautiful Boeing 707s and have a real meal. Nowadays, they charge you for a, a wedge of cheese and someone's dirty headsets. Right, Elmer? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Take it on the last one here, huh? Well, not Count Marion. Why didn't she go into Florida? Isn't this her much-deserved spring break? Apparently, she found the idea of a psychic conference in Sedona rather fascinating. <laughs> well, I can't really see Marion as the Fort Lauderdale thong and a wet t-shirt type. I can. 
My money says she doesn't show. She'll be here. Thank you. Who had the decaf? Yeah, here. Is that just a feeling? No, she told me she was coming. I got you a low-fat latte. Look who knows me so well. Where's Warren? I have his double espresso. He's... Bumped into some old friends. Warren! Do you really need this? Oh, very much so. Uh. Ow! Elmer, are you okay? Are you all right? <laughs> they, they make the darn Joe too hot. You sure you're okay? Something uh, bothering you, or...? This hot coffee's bothering me. Are you sure it's not something to do with the flight? Something that you're, uh, you're sensing, or...? Miles, please. Here, let me take a look at that. I'm all right. They put these little jackets on it, and the cup's still too damn hot. You might want to try and put some uh, vitamin E on that as soon as you can. Ugh. What's wrong? I'm afraid. Of what? Fly. If it were physically possible, these knuckles would be white about now. You no, know, it's the safest form of travel. It's safer than a car. Have you got any practical medical advice for me, Doc? Drink heavily. <laughs> I'm way ahead of you. Attention, passengers. We will now begin boarding Spartan Air Flight 602 to Detroit and Phoenix. At this time, we'd like to invite all Let's go, people. Passengers Coach, is open seating and not when you step near the giant. I'm going to wait a few more minutes for Marion. Says I got her ticket, so... Thank you. Give to the children of Central America. I'm sorry, I'm really late. I'm sorry. Look ahead, girl. Are you okay, miss? Yes, thanks. There was a stewardess, a flight attendant, over there. Did you see her? <sighs> you okay? Has Flight 602 left yet? I'm supposed to be on that plane. They've already closed the door. No, they haven't. I've got her boarding pass. Where's it going? Still not flush. Press up on the gust lock as you pull inward. These old L67s are stubborn. Well, prodigal daughter. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has turned on the fast. Hey, everyone. We asked them. Oh. <laughs> I don't uh, waste any time, do they? I saved a seat for you, Marion. She's okay over here. Oh, well, mine has the view. It's the window seat. Here you go, little lady. Thank you for your cooperation. Hi. You do know where you're going. Sedona, Arizona. Why? What do you mean? I think it looks really interesting. Four days in the vortex of energy that is Sedona. Tap into your potential and reach your higher consciousness amidst the beauty of the red rocks. What? I only go for the massage. Uh-huh. Sir, you'll have to store your bag under the seat in front of you. 
quiet. I already have a bag under that seat. I'll try and see if I can find a space for it. No, no, I'll just put it under the seat. I'm here. sorry, sir. No, miss, I'll just put it under the seat. It's miss, an oversized miss. bag. You have miss, to, miss, you miss, have to comply miss, with regulations. Put... Where did you get these? Are you with the NTSB? Uh, uh, no, ma'am. Are you an insurance carrier? Class action attorney? No, ma'am. Then you're a very sick individual. What? What was that all about? Care to fill us in, Professor? He's been acting strange all day. That's the woman who helped me. What? You saw her? Where? She spoke to me at the terminal. She's dead. Speak up, Professor. These are pictures of the crew members who died on Flight 390 last year. children's masks fit tightly to their faces. A life vest is located under your seat. All right, all right. Um, Spartan Air, like 390, crashed prior to landing 10 miles east of the airport into uh, Anderson Woods. And Flight 602, us, and Flight 390 are... Uh, are the same flight. See, the thing is, is that uh, after the crash last year, the airline figured that uh, people would be spooked taking flight 390, so they renumbered the route. Well, still doesn't explain what we're doing on it. Well, Elmer asked me to make the reservations for Phoenix, and then when the travel agent gave me a number of flight options, the, you know, the connector to Detroit sort of rang a bell. <laughs> See, the thing is, is that since the crash of flight 390, strange things have been happening on this plane. And you just thought you'd see for yourself. No, ourselves, selves, ourselves. I, I, I mean, it's not like we're going that far out of the way. And in fact, this flight was uh, was cheaper. I don't understand. I thought we were going to a conference. They are, but our good friend Miles here thought we'd make a pit stop in Motown to satisfy some ghoulish curiosity. You should have told us, Miles. I'm sorry. I didn't want pre-knowledge to influence your reactors. Let's hear it, Miles. What kind of strange things are supposedly happening aboard this flight? Apparitions. Sudden gusts of frigid air. Unidentified masses hovering over the wind. Sightings of dead crew members. That's right. That's right. How do you know? Are you, are you experiencing visions? No, I saw this lame TV movie about it. It's all supposed to happen when, I don't know, Flight 50-something crashed over the Everglades. Flight 505 in 1973. That's right. But, 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 do you know why? I couldn't tell you. I fell asleep halfway through it. All I know is that... They were flying over Tallahassee at the time. Salvaged parts. What? Some airlines in the past have been known to salvage usable parts from crash sites. Oh. Yeah, well, it's true. And in the case of Flight 505, parts were put into another plane, and it was that plane on which people saw dead crew members. And I believe the same phenomenon is happening here. I've got work orders from ground maintenance stretching back over the whole of last year, and if Spartan Air has reused any parts from the crash of 390, there's going to be a paper trail. Well, when you find the make and model number of the ghost, let me know. Till then, keep it down. Guys, Marion already saw the flight attendant from Flight 390. Uh, what's her name, Jeanette? Jeanette DePass or DePass? I don't know what I saw. You said you saw her, Marion. I said it looked like her. Shh. Settle down, people. Guys.